The team has done an incredible job of getting us ready for this storm. I'll tell you, all storms, you know, as they come into land, we prepare from a command center perspective. So we're very in line to what we've done in storms of the past. Um, this storm is much larger um, and is moving very quickly, but I, I have to tell you the command center we activated on Saturday has been on point for us and able to move product, about 800 truckloads of product into the locally affected stores. We're thinking about 100 stores as of now, so um, they've done an amazing job. How does 800 truckloads compare for this storm to say other big storms? Harvey was a big one last year, different region of the country for certain, but give us a perspective on that 800 truckloads. You know, I'll tell you, it's a mix of product from pre-storm. We're starting to see post-storm product roll into stores along with generators and water. I'll tell you, I just recently went through Hurricane Irma, very similar as to what we did during Hurricane Irma and Hurricane Harvey as well. Um, we have our local facilities and our holding facilities and our RDCs here close, closer to the impact of the storm. I'll tell you, we've been able to turn around product very quickly to our store and be there for the communities on this storm. So what do you sell the most of, Jennifer, before a storm hits? And then what do you sell the most of afterwards? You know, I'll tell you, we kind of look at storms from three phases, right? So the initial phase is pre-storm. So we immediately, immediately see generators, cords, tarps, um, plywood, water really start to pick up. Um, mm -hmm. That's what we've seen over the past few days in stores. Um, as we transition to immediate post storm, it goes into cleanup for us. So it goes into cleanup supplies and bleach and gloves and mops. And then we go into the third phase, which is a much longer term phase of recovery, depending on whether it's a wind event or whether it's a water event, we start to see sheetrock, we start to see um, flooring, um, roofing, fencing really start move for us the next phase of this storm. Jennifer, what happens to the Lowe's stores, the Lowe's employees? Are you able to continue to operate through the storm? At what point do you have to close down for the safety of the store and the employees' lives of themselves, of course? Yeah, I'll tell you, our most important thing is to make sure our employees have the time to prep. They spend so much time working within the community, helping our communities get on their feet. And then at some point, we make the decision that we need to close our stores and allow our employees time to either evacuate under mandatory evacuations. So a lot of times we follow the governance of what's happening within the community. So for instance, we'll go ahead and close our coastal stores um, today at 6 p.m. to allow our employees to evacuate and make sure we're staying within ordinances as well. Does that change as the forecast change? I mean, how quickly are you able to adjust? We thought that the storm was going to hit Thursday night. Now it looks like Friday morning. Does that give you a couple more hours to stay open for the community? It does, and we've given the autonomy to our teams, honestly, where there's still demand and they still have product that's relevant to the customer pre-storm. Um, we give the, them the autonomy to stay open and make sure they're serving the community. We can, we can move that very quickly within our stores and within each community um, as we see the need.